Hi everyone, this is Jacques Delorme from Vice Sports. Today's topic is on limiting factors in regards to training. There are a large number of limiting factors that will determine how well a person will lose weight or gain muscle mass as part of a training program. There are five key areas to consider. Number one, genetics. There are numerous claims made by people who will argue they cannot be skinny or a good athlete. It is true that there are upper limits to what people can achieve. We all can't be Michael Jordan. Most people do not attempt to get to the upper limits of their potential. Anyone can improve their overall health, body composition, and performance to some degree with some consistent effort. Number two, exercise. Physical activity as a limiting factor can easily be changed if a person has the desire. A person's daily activity will determine how their body will look. Someone who sits at a desk all day and then goes home to sit in front of a TV or a computer will likely end up with a decrease in metabolism. This can cause fat gain, muscle loss, and lifestyle related diseases. As a general rule, the number of steps a person takes in a given day can be used to determine their activity level, sedentary or active. A sedentary or low activity lifestyle would take less than 5,000 steps per day. Active lifestyles take 10,000 steps per day or more. If you add a few hours per week of high intensity exercise, real change in physical fitness and overall health is possible. Number three, physiology. There are times when results in overall health are difficult and it may require checking with a medical expert to determine if there are other causes. There may be underlying conditions like diabetes or a heart condition that will affect your overall performance. Number four, mindset. Mental attitude can make a huge difference. It can determine whether or not a person sticks to a nutrition and exercise plan or bails on it after a short period of time. Research has shown that a person is far more likely to succeed in their quest if they have a goal in mind. Number five, nutrition. Nutrition is the most important limiting factor. A healthy diet will promote fat loss and help feed muscles so they grow. When the body is not craving a nutrient it needs, recovery from intense exercise is shorter, so exercise can be harder, longer, and more frequent. When it comes down to defining good nutrition, all good nutrition plans need to meet four important criteria. Number one, properly controls energy balance. Energy balance is the direct relationship between energy you take in, which is your food calories, and the energy you give out, which is the calories you burn by exercise. There are three possibilities. A positive energy balance, which means more energy is taken in than is given out. If taken too far, can lead to weight gain. Negative energy balance is more energy given out than is taken in in food. An intense negative balance can create an I'm starving response from the body, causing it to slow down or shut down any non-essential functions like reproduction, metabolism, or brain function, just simply so it can survive. The third one is a neutral energy balance. Energy in and energy out are the same, so you tend to maintain your weight. The next section is nutrient and calorie density. And what we're referring to here are the different foods. You'll see the two tables that are up on the screen. The first one is the nutrient density. That means there's a really, really high ratio of vitamins, minerals, and fiber in the food compared to the total calories of the food that you're eating. For example, the raw leafy green vegetables with a, like a rating of 100 is really, really high. So your vegetables has a very low calorie content, but very good nutrients. The other side of the scale is table two, which is your calorie density. The number of calories based on the weight of the food. So in the top case, you'll find that you've got your fresh veggies again, which has only 100 calories for a really large amount of weight. As you go down the list, you get into the meats, you get into the nuts, the oils, which have a lot of calories for a very small amount of mass. The best combination to promote better health and fat loss is to eat foods with a high nutrient density and a low calorie density. For those looking to gain muscle mass, food high in nutrient density will be important, 
but calorie intake will need to increase so higher calorie dense foods will need to be eaten as well. The third section for a good health plan is to have one that actually has three different goals. It achieves health, body composition and performance goals. A large number of people will tend to focus on one of the three goals with most just really wanting to look good. Results tend to come over time but most think it happens really easily and will try the quick fix like using drugs or aggressive programs. Unfortunately they are not sustainable in the long term. Set realistic goals which involve how you look, how you feel and how you perform to create a consistent nutrition plan that will work for years to come and not just for the short term. The final criteria is an honest and outcome based type of plan. Without actually tracking what you eat, it is really difficult to determine whether or not your diet is really what it needs to be. People think they're eating healthy, but they feel sluggish all day, they have health issues like obesity, and they generally feel lousy. Eating habits don't match the outcome they expect. To understand where your diet's lacking, you need to take an honest look at what you eat every day and then change it. The outcome will indicate whether or not the change makes a real difference. Understanding all four areas we just looked at will really help you develop a better nutrition plan that will show real results over the time frame you're choosing, especially with a longer term time frame. If you want more details on some other areas of nutrition, other areas of exercise, motivation, by all means visit our website at www.visportsnutrition.ca.